grade 8 math number 11.2b, we're going to justify the triangle sum theorem. We talked about that in the last video, 11.2a. We can use our knowledge of parallel lines intersected by a transversal to informally justify the triangle sum theorem. Informally means not formal, okay? So we're going to justify this so-called triangle sum theorem that we talked about in the last video. And that says, that theorem says the measures of the angles of a triangle total 180 degrees. All right? So that means if we've got parallel lines like this, line A and line B, and we've got a triangle, we can prove that this triangle is 180 degrees by this triangle sum theorem and by drawing these parallel lines. Now I want you to remember that the little equal sign with the little curve on top of it means congruent. That means it's equal, the same. All right? So I got a couple words, a few words I want you to add to your notes. When we're doing proofs, which is sort of like what we're doing right now, we're doing a geometric proof. We use a few things in our proof to prove it. We use definitions. That's a formal meaning. You know what a definition is. We use axioms, and you're going to hear this word axiom. It's a statement that everyone believes is true without proof because it's so obvious. And we use theorems like this triangle sum theorem. It's a statement that's been proved by a chain of reasoning. And we're going to use postulates. That's a true statement that doesn't need to be proved. And theorems and even axioms come from postulates. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do to justify this triangle sum theorem is we're going to draw a triangle and label the angles as 1, 2, and 3. All right? And you can put the 2 on this side if you want. You can put the 3 on that side. It doesn't matter, all right? As long as you follow what you're doing with the corresponding angle, all right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line through the base of the triangle. Whoops, we forgot our 2 here. All right, so we got a line A drawn through the base. All right, the base is the bottom. Now, here's a postulate. Okay, remember, that's a true statement that doesn't need to be proved, and that's where the theorems and axioms come from. So, this parallel postulate says that through a point not on line L, or in this case line A, there's exactly one line parallel to line L, or line A. So, what it's saying is, through a point that's not on this line going through the base, so that point would be 1, wouldn't it? It would be where the vertex of angle 1 is. So it's saying through this point right here, there's exactly one line parallel to this line. Well, there is. If we're going through this point, there's only going to be one place that we could put a line to make it parallel to that line. That's what the parallel postulate's saying. So we draw line B parallel to line A through that vertex where 1 is, and it's opposite the base. Remember, the base is the bottom. So we're drawing this parallel line. Now we've got A, B, and we've got triangle with the interior angles of 1, 2, and 3. All right? Now, this is chain of reasoning, and I want you to look at this, okay? If D and B are equal to each other, and E and C are equal to each other, and we know that A, D, and E equal 180, well, if D is equal to B, can't we put B in its place? And if E is equal to C, couldn't we put C in the place of E and then get A, B, C as 180? Yeah, because we can substitute them if they're congruent, okay? So that's what we're going to be doing. So the next thing we do, step four, is we're going to extend each of the non-base sides. This, you know, the base is down here, so a non-base side would be this side, right? And another non-base side would be this side of the triangle. And we'll make transversals, S and T. And these two transversals will intersect those parallel lines, A and B. See how it intersects A right here and right here? And it intersects line B right there at the vertex of 1. Now we're going to label the angles that we made by the transversals as angles 4 and angles 5. So now along this line, we got angle 4, 1, and 5, don't we? Now because 4 and 3, 4 and 3... All right, and this is transversal S, this is transversal T. Now, remember we were talking about alternate interior angles? So coming across transversal T, 
all right? Alternate means on opposite sides of the transversal. Interior means inside the parallel lines. You know, exterior is outside the parallel lines. So if we've got alternate on opposite sides of the transversal and interior inside the parallel lines, angles, well, then that would be four and three. They're on opposite sides of the transversal inside the parallel lines. So angles four and three are alternate interior angles and they're congruent. Ang measure of angle four is congruent to measure of angle three, okay? So we know, and I don't know if you can tell in this lighting, but they're both orange. So now you can see that five and two, they're both green. So you know what's gonna happen, don't you? Because angle five and angle two are alternate interior angles across this transversal S, they're congruent. So the orange ones, four and three are congruent to each other and the green ones, five and two are congruent to each other because they're alternate interior angles to each other, okay? So the measure of angle five is congruent to the measure of angle two. Now, knowing this, the three angles that lie along line B here in the vertex of the triangle are angle one, angle four, and angle five. And we can see that they lie along line B, right? And you know what happens when three angles lie along a line like that? They total 180 degrees. So the measure of angle one, the measure of angle four, and the measure of angle five are 180 degrees. Well, if these are 180 degrees and four is equal to three and five is equal to two, then the inside is 180 degrees. Because three and four are congruent and angle two and five are congruent, that means the measure of angle one, angle, measure of angle two, and the measure of angle three are 180 degrees. This shows that the angle sum of a triangle is always 180 degrees. See, we can substitute one angle for another in the equation because they're congruent to each other. We know four and three are congruent and five and two are congruent because of the alternate interior angle rule. So we can say one, two, and three total 180 degrees. See, so we justified the triangle sum theorem. And we used a parallel postulate, and we used some rules like alternate interior angles. See that? So we can say we've proved and justified that triangle sum theorem, okay? See how we went and did the chain of reasoning, like down here? If this is this, and this is this, then it's that, okay? So you do it in order, and that's doing a proof, all right? That's justifying something. All right, we're going to move on to the next video we're going to we're going to talk about finding missing missing angle measures in triangles okay i hope this was helpful i hope you're doing okay keep your chin up we're slowly making it through this i know you can do this i believe in you okay see you next video bye